before we start this story, I just want to say, this is the strangest story you are ever going to hear, or, or you, you ever have heard in like any of the FNAF series ever. It is the most insane story that we have ever had. So you're not prepared, like even if you think you're prepared, you're not prepared for what's to come. Uh, just as you think it gets bad, it gets worse and worse, I'm telling you. So, um, <laughs> enjoy. Enjoy this story. I'm going to enjoy reading it. Oh my gosh. Okay. Right. On the construction. This is unreal. Maya looked up and caught her reflection in the neon-bounded, mirror-tilted ceiling. By the way, I'm really sorry. Like, I, I'm calling it Maya. I'm calling her Maya. It could be Maya, but uh, I call her Maya because I knew someone called Maya. Anyway. Uh, her eyes glowed red in the blazing light. For an instant, Maya shivered. The weird radiance in her eyes made her look like one of the undead from a zombie movie. Maya shook herself and quickly shifted her gaze. Didn't I tell you? Jackson shouted to be heard above the blaring 80s rock music that pulsed around them. He brushed back his locks, took a huge bite of pizza, and looked, and looked from Maya to their strawberry blonde friend Noel, who was gazing in awe at the bright yellow roller coaster track that wove in and out of luminescent climbing tubes entwined like snakes throughout the vast expanse beyond the dining area. Noelle, her freckles standing out in the bright lights, reached for her soda. I have to admit, I thought Mega Pizzaplex was more hype than reality, but this is pretty cool. She sucked through her straw and bopped the music beat. Her ponytail swung back and forth. Pretty cool? Jackson dropped his half-eaten pizza slice. This is beyond cool. I can't wait to try a VR booth. AR booth first, Jax, Maya said. She looked past the string of zipping go-karts and focused on the glass enclosure near the pizza-themed Tilter Whirl. Every pole on the ride was shaped like a pizza topping. The large bubble-like booth was the whole reason she'd wanted to come here tonight. Jackson rolled his eyes. Yeah, yeah, birthday girl, it's all about you. He flashed his signature mischievous grin and nudged Noelle, who gave Maya a goofy look. Maya struck an exaggerated glam pose and checked herself in the overheard... It, there's a, this is a mistake, I'm sorry, this is a typo. In the overhead mirror again. In the psychedelic lights flashing around them, her long black hair looked like an oil slick reflecting a kaleidoscope. With her head tilted, her eyes no longer appeared red. They were their normal dark brown. She thought that between her dark skin and full features, her red dress and the red rose tucked behind her ear, she looked a little like a flamingo, uh, like a f flamingo, like a flamenco dancer. Maya returned her attention to her friends. She threw a ballad up napkin, a ball, sorry. Ah, she threw a balled up napkin at them. Just because I got to 16 before you two losers is no reason to hate on me. They all laughed. Maya noticed that the bark of their laughter barely made a dent in the clamour around them. The music, loud as it was, competed with so many sounds that it was hard to distinguish them all. Maya could, however, make out the clatter of the roller coaster on its tracks, the hum of the go-karts, the tinny music and pings and bleeps of the arcade games, the buzzing sounds of laser tag, and, overlaying it all, the sounds of happy screams and shouts and chatter. Maya's sister, Elena, not quite Eleanor, but close enough, would hate this place, Maya thought affectionately. Elena liked things quiet and peaceful. Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex was the opposite of quiet and peaceful. Elena would have hated the bright coloured chaos in the Pizzaplex too. Whereas Maya loved vibrant jewel tones, her sister was all about white and grey and pastels. Maya looked down at her blood-red dress, then shifted her gaze to Jackson's bright orange shirt and Noelle's hot pink blouse. She glanced around. Even their bright clothes were lost in the rainbow scape of the pizzaplex. Maya and her friends were squeezed into a corner booth in the main dining area. The, hu the room was huge, but it was so stuffed with shiny red laminate-topped tables and chrome-backed chairs that it, seemed si that it seemed smaller than it was especially because every table was filled with vor voracious families, kids, and teens chowing down on pizza. Servers clad in red Freddy Fazbear uniform shirts with multicolored glow necklaces looped around their necks could barely squeeze through the aisles as they rushed through the room serving pizzas and drinks. The swinging doors to the kitchen on the far side of the room were in almost constant motion. 
Everywhere Maya looked, brilliant colour and sparkling light beamed and blinked and shimmered. It seemed like everything in the pizzaplex was spectacularly illuminated. LED lights were everywhere. They formed frames around all of the tabletops and the flashy Freddy-themed posters on the walls and outlined the squares of the black and white checkerboard floor. Anything not wrapped and highlighted in LEDs was brightened by neon. Glowing archways formed the entrance to the dining area and to every other entertainment venue in the pizzaplex. Alternating with the LED-wrapped Freddy-themed posters, neon art in the shape of Freddy's characters and pizza wedges blazed bright in reds, gr blues, greens, yellows, pinks, purples and oranges. The mirrored ceiling caught all this light and refracted it, sending prisms of colour everywhere. Outside the dining area, in the centre of the pizzaplex's domed roof, a backlit pizza motif, stained glass cupola in the centre of the round mall's ceiling beamed streams of even more colour over the constant movement below. <clears throat> Maya thought that the effect was like every uh, was like a ballet of every tint she'd ever seen. The whole place seemed to flare and flicker in a constant motion of dazzling bright hues. You know 16 is just a construct, right? Jackson shouted. Maya flinched when a speck of partially chewed pizza landed on her arm. Yeah. She wrinkled her nose and brushed it off. She was used to Jackson spitting food across the table. He got so excited when he talked. When he got so revved up about something, his words would run together and he'd forget to breathe. At the end of his all-too-frequent monologues, he'd been gasping for air. A person's age isn't real, Jackson continued. It's just a thought. Its existence depends on the subject's mind. Noelle g groaned. Oh, not again. Can't we leave science in science class? Maya patted Noelle's arm in sympathy. However, the truth was Maya liked science, even when she didn't always understand it. Maya's main interest was biology, specifically botany. Or botany. Um... She loved growing things. Her mum said she was a born nurturer. But Jackson's musings about physics could be fun to listen to. Noelle frowned at Jackson. And besides, ages and a thought is an empirical fact. Maya has been alive for 16 years, no matter what her mind has to say about it. Jackson waved as if swatting away Noelle's words. Maya stared at Jackson's big, dark hand. Jackson was tall and ebony-skinned. His mother was Jamaican and his dad was from the, that was from the Deep South. He looked like he should be a star basketball player, but he hated sports. He was all about science and philosophy. He loved to ask unanswerable questions and try to answer them for hours on end. But what's alive? <laughs> Jackson countered Noel's logic. Is water wet? Uh, he leaned forward, practically bouncing in his seat. Last night, I read an article about something called quantum immortality. It's a theory that says we never actually die. Ooh. <coughs> Noelle looked up at the mirrored ceiling as if it could help her. She sighed so loudly that not even the cacophony around them could silence her exasperation. I already liked the story because of the science aspect at the start. <laughs> Jackson ignored her. See, it's related to the many worlds theory. No matter which branch of reality you follow, your consciousness is experiencing existence. Each pass leads to more existence. We can never experience anything but existence. So we go on and on and on. Well, you sure go on and on, Noelle said. Maya laughed. Noelle didn't even smile at her own joke. She crossed her arms and gave Jackson a hard look. People die all the time. The idea of immortality is totally whack. Are you telling me that when my uncle died, he didn't really die? He, her voice rose at the end of the question. I, for some reason, I dropped my voice. I don't know. Are you telling me that when my uncle died, he didn't really die? Noelle had been very close to her uncle and she'd been shocked and devastated a couple weeks before when, he killed, when he'd been killed in, an ar in a car accident. Maya briefly touched Noelle's arm gently. Jackson, as typically oblivious to real emotion as usual, didn't notice Noelle's upset. Well, quantum immortality only applies to the observer, so we actually can't know for sure if he's really dead. I mean, his consciousness could have branched onto a path that hasn't led to his death. No one has seen what the end game would look like because the observer hasn't been there yet. What seems real to us may not be what's actually real, so Maya, noticing Noelle's darkening expression, poked Jackson. You done eating yet? I want to head over to the AR unit. Who would want to do that? Who would want to head over to the FNAF AR unit? <laughs> Jackson glanced at his empty plate. He looked surprised to find it pizzaless. Noelle exhaled, as if blowing out her upset. She cocked her head and pointed at Jackson. Pizza is a construct, you know, Noelle said. It only exists in your mind. Jackson grinned. Touché, girl. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's great. 
he offered Noel his fist, and she, having apparently forgiven him his insensitivity, bumped his fist with hers before she stood. Mayor Jackson and Noel linked arms as they left the VR booth and stepped into the throngs rushing from one entertainment venue to the next. Noel squealed when she bumped into an employee wearing a Montgomery Gator costume. The faux green gator mascot patted Noel on the head and moved on. Roxanne Wolf is a great character, Jackson gushed. Did you see? Mayor tugged on his arm. Yeah, we saw. Hey, I let you drag me into a VR booth and now it's my turn. Come on, the AR booth is this way. Jackson resisted her. He pointed at a line twisting toward the entrance of the roller coaster. I want to go on Fast Freddy, Jackson said. It's supposed to have all the latest in roller coaster high tech. Jackson push, uh, pulled the brochure from his pocket. It says here that each car has a touchpad and you can pick your own music. Five genres to choose from. There are 28 LED lights programmed to change color throughout the ride. Jackson pointed past the long lines. And see, it has a moving loading platform. It never comes to a complete stop. He waved the brochure. And it has cameras, some on board and some on the track. Lasers trigger timing devices and computers record the images and create a video that's synced to whatever music you pick. The video is downloaded and sent to that kiosk. <coughs> <coughs> oh God. Being Jackson is making me want to cough so much. Uh, Jackson pointed at a small hut-like structure that was covered in strobing lights. It's all done in under a minute, so you can get the ultimate souvenir to go. Now that would be a great birthday present, don't you think, Mayor? Jackson inhaled deeply to refill his lungs. That's what I need to do right now. <laughs> uh, roller coaster cars careened past overhead. Mayor felt a rush of air brush against her face. The screams of the coaster's riders hurt her ears. She shook her head. Later, AR booth first. Jackson hung his head. Then he bowed elaborately. Whatever thou dost sayest, milady. Mayor laughed. Jackson's southern, southern accent destroyed his attempt at Old English. Come on, she urged her friends. Noel and Jackson followed Mayor's lead. She tugged them away from the roller coaster entrance and on past the giant swings and bumper cars. At first, Mayor hadn't been in that into the idea of celebrating her birthday at Freddy's Pizzaplex. When Jackson had shown her the advertisements for the place, she thought they were so over the top that they were lame. She had to admit that Fazbear Entertainment knew how to make money. Before the Pizzaplex's big opening, the company sold thousands of mini hologram projectors at super discounted prices. And the first thing the projector displayed was a holographic Glamrock Freddy doing his spiel. Hey kids, do you want pizza? Well, Fazbear Entertainment has spared no expense developing the world's most extreme family fun center. Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex. A three stories tall, it's the flashiest, raddest, rockingest, safest pizza, the <laughs> safest pizzeria the universe has ever seen. Of course, Freddy and the band are excited to meet you. Utilizing the latest in animatronic technology, you can actually party with the stars themselves. So, on your next birthday, let Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex make you a superstar. Gregory, we need to vent. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, it's the perfect place to celebrate your sweet 16, Jackson had said. Mayer had resisted Jackson's pitch even when he listed all the entertainment possibilities. Of course they have a stage for the animatronics performances, and they'd have an arcade and laser tag, he told her, but they also have a theatre, giant swings and slides and climbing tubes and rides, including a dope roller coaster and bumper cars and state-of-the-art uh, electric-powered go-karts and a sweet carousel. Oh, and carnival games, maybe I can win you a plush Freddy. Be still, my beating heart, Maya had replied. What a great line. Um, when Maya had kept shaking her head, Jackson had talked even faster. Oh god, this is like, the book is basically challenging me at this point. They also have sick VR booths and roleplay venues. Oh, roleplay. Uh, <laughs> don't take that out of context. I mean, one of the future books has a roleplay segment. Anyway, uh, it's their premiere attraction because Freddy's has always put an emphasis on celebrating birthdays. I know what VR is, but what is AR? Maya had asked despite herself. Um, Jackson's eyes had lit up. He loved explaining things. AR stands for augmented reality. It's a way of crossing the real world with the virtual world. Basically, objects in the real world are enhanced by computer-generated perceptions. The one at the Pizzaplex is supposed to be a really awesome one. It uses all sorts of sensory mod modalities Visual, auditory, 
some matter sensory, olfactory, and even haptic. Haptic? May I had questions. Haptic means to grab onto something. Basically, the AI unit at the Pizzaplex lets you reach out and grasp things that aren't even really there. AR basically plays with reality. The tech can be both constructive and de de destructive, meaning that it can add things into the physical world or subtract things. Whereas VR completely replaces reality with a simulated one, AR is a mix of the real and the virtual. The AR unit at the Pizzaplex is called The World Celebrates You. It gives the illusion that everyone in the Pizzaplex is taking part in celebrating you. Basically, it's like having a massive birthday shindig without all the money and all the trouble. It's the ultimate way to spend a birthday. This was what convinced Maya to go for Jackson's idea. Even though she knew her family and all her friends would celebrate her birthday, she also knew it wasn't going to be a huge deal. Her family didn't have the money for a shindig like she wanted. It sounded pretty neat to have a whole Pizzaplex full of people partying with Maya on her birthday. So here they were, and she wanted to get her party started. Maya and her friends had been at the Pizzaplex for a few hours already. They'd wondered at first. They even... they... Then they'd eaten at Jackson's insistence, and then they'd gone to the VR area, again at Jackson's insistence. During this time, Maya had gotten a pretty good sense of the place. The Pizzaplex was set up in a circle. In the centre of the circle, ramps led down to a black light enclosure created for the littlest kids. The cave-like area was filled with glowing climbing bars, slides, and foam building blocks. All this was set up around a glitter ball pit. Padded benches for watchful parents surrounded the area. Above this subterranean play area, a grand de was, I don't know what this word means, I'm sorry, two-story theatre rotunda erupted like a fairy tale castle under the stained glass cupola. The rest of the entertainment venues and shops, of course stores uh, in the Pizzaplex carried Freddy-themed clothing, costumes, souvenirs and toys, ring the Pizzaplex. Between these venues and the theatre, a go-kart track crisscrossed over and under the walkways that led from one part of the Pizzaplex to the other. Several VR booths were spaced along the walkways, and above everything, the roller coaster tracks intertwined with the climbing tubes. The two systems looked like a serpentine modern art installation, or a hovering serpent waiting to devour all the people bustling about beneath it. Maya dragged her friends through the crowd, yanking on Jackson as he tried to veer toward the role-playing area. Her gaze was set on the prize, the AR unit. It was only a few yards away, and it was... Closed? Maya exclaimed. Maya stopped so abruptly that Jackson ran into her. Noelle ploughed into Jackson. The two grunted and glared at Maya. Then they looked in the direction of her gaze. The AR unit looked like a giant snow globe, only without the snow. Its base was bright red, and inside the clear, thick glass, a throne-like gold upholstered chair sat in the centre of the clear bubble. A flashing neon sign blinked above the spherical glass. The world celebrates you. Neon stars and streamers, streamers, just people on Twitch, surrounded the world, words. <clears throat> Unfortunately, another sign was attached to bright yellow tape, similar to the crime scene tape, stretching across the entrance to the AR unit. That sign read, closed, under construction. Under construction, Maya snapped. How can they make a big deal about a premiere attraction and not even finish it before they open? That's false advertising. Maya turned to scowl at Jackson. You said I'd get my big party. Jackson's usually animated expression was slack as he looked at the closed AR unit. His shoulders slumped. I'm sorry, Maya. I didn't know. Noelle hugged Maya. Come on, it's not that big of a deal, is it? You've got us, and... She swept her arm outward to indicate all the commotion in the Pizzaplex. It's not like there's anything to do. Oh, sorry, it's not like there's nothing to do. Maya blinked away tears that had come out of nowhere. She felt like a spoiled brat for being so upset, and she didn't want to cry in front of her friends. But she was so disappointed, she'd really looked forward to using the AR. Maya glowered at the closed sign. Then she set her jaw and took a deep breath. Looked around. No one was paying any attention to her and her friends. She made up her mind. She rushed forward and ducked under the yellow tape. Noelle gasped. Maya! You can't go in there! Maya stepped over the threshold and looked back at Noelle and Jackson. Looks like I can. Are you coming? Noelle shook her head. She glanced over her shoulder and looked up. Maya followed Noelle's gaze. A huge mirrored curved enclosure loomed above a large area marked employees only. The space looked big enough to house all the behind the scenes offices and machinery that must have gone into operating something as elaborate as the Pizzaplex. It was clear the mirrors were two way 
and the elevated enclosure was where security kept an eye on the pizzaplex. Obviously aided by the dozens of CCTV cameras Maya had noticed everywhere she and her friends had been, Maya was sure a bunch of self-important, low-paid employees were playing Big Brother up there. <laughs> I get that reference. Yeah, they could be watching, but she didn't care. They can come and drag me out if they want, Maya said. I'm going in. Come with me, or don't. Noelle and Jackson exchanged a look. Jackson shrugged. What's the worst they can do? Throw us out? He looked longingly at the roller coaster, then shrugged again. We can always go home and work on our science projects. Noelle blew a raspberry. As if.